In this video, we're gonna be covering why you can't get clients from cold outreach and exactly how you can avoid that so you can start scaling into new audiences. Cold outreach is essential for any business because it is the most predictable flow of leads that can get absolutely insane cost per book calls and cost per acquisitions. Like you can see here in this client example, you can see a CAC of $184 and a meeting cost of just $25. Most of the time, people are gonna book calls for between $300 to $500, let alone acquire a customer for $185. What I'm gonna be covering is the things you absolutely must avoid and the things you absolutely must do in order to get your cold outreach systems to actually generate clients and money instead of just quote unquote leads or quote unquote booked calls. What you need to know is that cold traffic, e.g. strangers, do not care one bit about your business. People do not just buy shit for 10 to 20K. You are going and harassing someone on the internet to try and get them to give you money. Unless it's really good timing, it's probably not gonna be relevant for them. Unless you're really good at sales or if they just have a ton of money and they just wanna take a bet on you or if your offer is just insane and they can't say no to it. When people talk about the offer and how important the offer is, that is the thing you wanna be looking at. When you're dealing with people that are either you are reaching out to or that have expressed interest in an ad, you wanna keep in mind that urgency is not going to be built in. But if you're just sort of getting started or if you're closer to the start of your journey and you don't have a crazy offer or crazy social proof, you're going to be dealing with people that don't wanna buy it right now. As such, when you're dealing with these cold buyers, the objective is not necessarily to get them to give you their credit card immediately, especially Especially when so many people are selling so hard 24 seven. A lot of my clients at the moment are seeing cold email campaigns two to three X in output at least just by driving value up front compared to a more direct style. What happens as a result is that a lot of the times these leads become lower intent. So if you do get leads from a value-based campaign versus a direct style campaign, they're gonna be lower intent. So you're meeting your lead to booking rate is gonna be lower. At least now you're gonna have a level of interest from someone who you can add to the pipeline, open a sales conversation and potentially convert down the line. If you already have an abundance of leads and you can't really manage your pipeline and you want to scale it back and be a bit more direct. If you are too direct, it can be just a really fast way to burn a lead. If you do rush for the kill too quick, then a lot of the time you're just going to be put in the same boat as all the other internet scammers and pretty much never give you the chance to build some good rapport. So when they're cold, if you do try and get them to buy, you need to be aware if something's freezing, it's going to be too brittle and it's just going to break. You don't want to try and move it too much. You want to chuck that bad boy in the microwave and get it warmed up nice and tasty, then take them out of the microwave and then all of a sudden you can eat it. You've got your cold email, your advertising, You've got your headline that's dragging them in. You've got your content that's initially bringing them in. Then you might have a couple of VSLs. You might have a bit of content. You might have some case studies. You might have a sales conversation. You might have a post booking VSL. You're going to show them all this content here because the focus is you're trying to get them to warm up. You want to keep in mind that based off random internet stats, aka trust me, only 3% of the market are really looking to buy. Then you have about 90% of the people that are unaware, 4% that are problem aware, 3% solution aware. So if you optimize for getting the 3%, you're going to get sales, but that also means that you're leaving 97% of potential prospects completely ostracized, which means that your campaigns flop and you're basically not gonna get that much money back. What you can do is drive leads with a valuable thing that gets them to respond, then add them to the pipeline and nurture them into buying your high ticket stuff or hit them with a lower commitment front end offer. Or when I'm talking about nurturing them, what you can do is you can basically increase their levels of awareness using content. An example of this is if someone's unaware, it means that they have cancer growing that they can't feel. If they're problem aware, it means they have a pain in their back, but they're not sure what it is. If they're solution aware, it means they have a pain in their back and they know it's cancer and they know they need chemo. If they're product aware, it means they have a pain in their back and they know they need chemo and they're shopping around for a few places, but they're unsure. And then the most aware is basically just shopping around for a chemo vendor and only needing the deal. You can address each of these different people in your marketplace differently, being aware that most of the scale occurs at the lower levels of awareness. If you make offers that appeal to someone that doesn't know that they have cancer, then it's gonna have much higher scale than someone who's most aware. What you need to be aware of is to get Get one of these unaware people to actually pay attention to you. You need a lot higher status and a lot higher authority to be able to convince them all the way along the awareness scale. And these most aware people, it's not going to take much to be able to convince them that they need something. If you're going to make a campaign, I would be saying, hey, here's how you know if you have cancer that you can't feel. Someone was most aware, I would be saying, here's a deal for chemo that's better than the other deals. If someone's product aware where they have a pain in their back, you might say, here are all the potential deals that you can get for chemo. Here's what you should be doing instead. If someone's solution aware, you might be educated them a little bit about chemo. If they have a problem in their back, you might say, hey, do you have this problem in your back? It might be cancer. Here's what you need to be considering in order to make sure that you're getting taken care of. Note that because of the timing piece, a lot of your work is going to get done in the follow-up process. So put work into your CRM and stay diligent on those deals. You need to know what these customers' current situation is. What do they hate? What do they want to avoid? And what things do you need to avoid mentioning in order to avoid breaking rapport? So if you do cold email, some people are going to absolutely hate that you send out a lot of emails and some people want you to sort of talk about more targeted stuff. There's certain 
buzzwords that you must avoid mentioning being involved with your product in order to sell someone without breaking rapport. Another thing is that there's gonna be the opposite of that, where there's gonna be things that you can immediately say that are gonna have them acknowledge you as a bird of a feather. So people obviously like buying from people that are similar to them. And there are gonna be certain phrases and certain sequences or certain things that you can be involved with that are gonna let them know we're not too different, we're the same. The next thing you wanna be aware of is where is the traffic from? So if they're from cold email, you might use a line like I just said that acknowledges, hey, I'm sure you would've got a ton of emails in your inbox, but what made this one stand out? Or if it's from a cold call, you might say, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I think one of my guys gave you a call the other day, I hope he wasn't too much of a scammer. Or if it was an ad, you might say something like, I think you came from my ads, right? Which one did you see? Oh, I know you came from my ads, right? I hope my face wasn't too ugly, it was blocking up your timeline. I wanna give you another example of rock, paper, scissors. If you've ever played this at like a primary school when you're a kid, you're gonna know there's a one little shit that is gonna absolutely hoodwink you and they're gonna make you throw. So you say, hey, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. You'll say, I'm scissors. And the other kid will go, ha ha, I'm actually a rock. So this is what you actually wanna do in your discovery calls. And what you're doing there is you're making them tell you their current situation. You're getting them to tell you what they hate. You're getting them to tell you what you need to avoid mentioning on the pitch in order to avoid breaking rapport. And you're also getting them to tell you exactly what they need to hear in order to close. Over time, you're gonna get enough information about your market that you're gonna know maybe my entire market is a rock. So that means deploy my rock method to my entire market and it's gonna get them all. That is when you deploy asset-based sales because you can leverage yourself up and record yourself doing a video pitch and then distribute that to your entire market. And then because it's gonna build so much rapport, you're gonna be able to close people without even getting on the phone to them. The reason this works so well is because there's a trend in the market that nobody likes being sold to. So getting on a sales call is actually really high friction. So what you need to do is hit them at a low level of awareness in the video sales pitch and then educate them into the sale without them getting on a call. And a lot of the times they won't even know that they're being sold. Education really needs to be compelling though for them to consume it. So it needs to be valuable content. It needs to be ideal content. It needs to be entertaining. And you need to sell them on actually consuming that content as well. It's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy where if you can sell them on consuming the content, the content's gonna sell them on the product or consuming more content. Another thing is that you need to know is that to sell someone, you need a lot of status on authority, especially when coming from cold. People only buy from people that are higher status than them, either in one realm or in general. So you might be talking to a CEO of a massive company, but you can still be higher status in one local thing. For example, if you put an absolute jock, like a football player, you can put an American football NFL QB in an opera house and say, hey buddy, go and sing. That guy's gonna get made fun of by the opera singers because he's low status in that local environment. Because what you can do is you need to build local status and local authority in the niche of your area of expertise, your zone of genius, and they can basically just get you to help them. If you want help with this, you can check out softronsolutions.com. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Look forward to vids in the future.